It's nice of you to join us today, Pip. Thanks so much for having me. Um, what's it been a week since I've last seen you? Yes, I know. Um, as you may know, I moved house. Oh, we know. It was. We know. Not going to lie, the most brutal move I've ever done in my life. Well, isn't that what, what? What's that? What is it that they say that like the three most traumas, most traumatic moments of your life is like divorce, divorce, a, a close death, and moving house. Yeah, it was horrendous like everything went wrong it was pretty bad and I was like trying to grin and bear it because my parents were helping but like behind my eyes tears I was literally like don't burst into tears don't stress out mum and dad even more but yeah so what happened um my couch didn't fit into the new place so it didn't go up the fire stairs you didn't do the pivot they tried pivot they came up and they were like so we have some bad news and I was like no not about my favorite couch would it be and they were like yeah it's about your favorite couch so that didn't fit up the stairs so Um, what did you do had to give that away had to call my ex to help me he was a blessing thank you shout out (laughs) he did a great job of saving my bacon that day and also when I was packing up my bed with my dad he spotted um two big bottles of lube and massage oil clocked it acted like nothing happened and I was like stop that <laughs> stop that like literally went oh I think if you don't have a big tub of it under your bed what are you doing what did you do with all your toys because we know you have a lot uh put them in a very like solid bag with a zip and mum was like helping me unpack and she like grabbed it and I like snatched it. I was like I'll take that don't worry that's doll. vibrating <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny no thank god but yeah it was a horrible move but we're moved in and we're feeling good so we're back we're back. Thank you so much for having me and for dealing with my babe. It was actual melts. a traumatic past week. Yeah, it was and hard. I said, just do what you need to do. I'll <laughs> at work holding the fort down, um, mm. getting us ready for this app. But um, look, this isn't the uh, what's it called? The I want to say bunny homewares. Homewares. This isn't the homewares podcast. This isn't the removalist um, nightmare podcast. If you are new here, we talk all things love, sex, dating, and relationships, and we have a really huge community where you send us DMs all the time at Triple J the Hookup on Instagram. Follow us, and we got a DM recently, Pip. Yes, this one we thought let's make an episode out of it. So someone DM'd us. They said, "Hey, hookup girls, I need help." I'm in my 20s and I'm seeing an older guy. He's going through a divorce while we're in really different life stages. I still want to make it work. We'd love to hear from other people who have navigated big age gaps. Yeah, there's so much to unpack just in that DM, but also with relationships with big age gaps in general. So let's get into it. So can a relationship with a big age gap work? We've definitely seen it on screen through celebrity culture, mm-hmm. Billie Eilish and her oh, ex. Oh, yeah, Jesse, what was his name? Rutherford? Rutherford? Yeah, yeah, from the from neighbourhood. The neighborhood. So well, she was 20 and he was 31. There's the classic Aaron Taylor-Johnson oh. and his wife, Sam. Yo. What's that age gap? That's like... That's like what, maybe 20, 25 That's a huge, or huge age gap. Yeah, so he's and 34. And he was like 17 when he met her. Yeah, and they're married now. And she was like 40. Yeah, and we can't not mention Leah. Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously. Oh. He has that famous rule where it's like if you are over 25, he's not interested in you. <laughs> and he's like 50 now, so very cool. Uh, so it can so go ick. it can go both ways. Obviously, with Aaron, he's dated uh well married to an older woman. Yeah. But that, and they have kids and everything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're still together. Yeah. But often it's kind of the other way around. Like often it is an older guy and a younger girl. And we're gonna get into that because we want to talk about like mm. that power dynamic that goes into a relationship like that and we want to talk a lot of things like is age just a number you know is like what's appropriate where do you draw the line where's yeah where what age is it it becomes like a bit creepy a bit of an ick like a bit inappropriate that's predatory yeah we'll talk about that we want to talk about the good and bad things about dating with age gaps this is something that you told us on our instagram your experiences and yeah how to how to navigate it like is this Mm. something that will work eventually like is this something long term well what's your experience with it like have you dated generally older or younger or around your age I know that they say that like what's that what's that like meme about you should date a guy that's like seven years older to actually mentally match your maturity yes like that's a bit of a yeah yeah I have always been like kind of my age or younger interesting which I find so interesting because the guys that I have dated like have felt mature but Mm. I was trying to unpack this when I knew that we were doing this episode and I think that I have always had a bit of a like commitment issue thing 
And so for me, going for someone who's like a tiny bit younger or around my age makes it more playful and fun and less like, you know, long-term kids, marriage, like all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of why I've kind of always gone for someone who's a bit, yeah, like my, you know, younger. -ish. Interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of the opposite. So the majority of people I've dated have always been older than me and by a lot, like five. Really? Five to. Oh, yeah, because your last ex was seven years older, wasn't he? Eight years older. Yeah. Eight years. Eight. And then the other, there was another one who was, uh, I think, six-ish. Yeah. So they've always been like five plus years, um, like older than me. Not for all of my partners, Have but for most. Have you done a bit of a reflection as to why you think that is? Like what has drawn you to that? It's definitely the slightly on the maturity thing and slightly like bad boy-esque. Um, like I liked the idea of being with someone like kind of experienced when I was younger and feeling kind of just like, <laughs> just like little, little princess, <laughs> little. Uh. Yeah. It's something like there's something maybe slightly taboo about it, especially like okay. I even had this like non relationship. It was like an online relationship with this dude who was living in London and I was in Sydney and the power dynamic. I loved it. Even though I knew I was like, mm, this is kind of a bit weird because he's okay. a lot older than me, but I was drawn to that for sure. And that was like, maybe like 21, 22. Do you think there's a part of you that likes like learning from someone older? Because that can be a thing. Like yeah, kind you of like that. the dynamic, yeah. like people might like the dynamic of having someone teach them new things. Yeah, the taking under the wing was definitely an attractive thing for me. That was where I was coming from. But we put it out to you on our Instagram at Triple J The Hookup. We put a poll up as we do. We asked how many years are between you and your partner? So zero years, 16%. One to four years, 50%. Four to eight years, 20%, and eight plus years, 13%. Okay, so most yeah. people are sitting in that one to four years yep. and then that four to eight years is 20%. That's right. And that does actually make sense because we did a bit of research and we found this Deakin University article talking about like the stats around age gaps. And they say across Western countries, about 8% of all married heterosexual couples can be classified as having a large age gap, 10 years or more. Mm. These generally involve older men partnered with younger women. Which is kind of what we assumed. And this is what we heard majority majority as well in our DMs. Just like a disclaimer, if you're like, hmm, there's a lot of like younger girl, older guy kind of stories. That's why. And I guess the stats reflect that. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot to unpack in that. Mm. We don't have time. Yeah. There's a reason why that kind of is the main like age gap that you find. But mm. interestingly, there was limited evidence in the research that we did uh, on same sex couples. Mm -hmm. However, it does say, like the research that is out there does say that the, the rates are higher. So like same-sex couples are more likely to have uh, larger age gaps. So 25% of male-male couples and 15% of female-female couples have large age gaps. It's funny as well because I literally just before this episode sent you a meme of that like gay couple yeah. and it was like day in the life of an age gap gay couple yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's this dude and with like a younger boy who looks like barely 18. I was like, lol. It's definitely <laughs> <laughs> of a thing where you're like daddy yeah you know? daddy so we asked another question as well um uh on our instagram we said what do you think is too large of an age gap five plus years six percent ten plus years forty two percent fifteen plus years thirty percent and twenty plus years twenty two percent so forty two percent of you think most of you think that anything above ten years is too large of an age gap Interesting. I'm like skirting on that. Like with yeah, the eight year I'm like, relationship, Dole. I was like almost there. Couple more years and yeah. you would be pushing it. <laughs> it's interesting as well because we had loads of DMs from people explaining their sort of rule about how they figure out an appropriate age gap. Yeah. So a lot of DMs we got said the common rule of thumb is half your age plus seven years. So what does that mean though? So I did the math on mine and that means 22 years old for me. Yeah. I would never. If anyone wants to work date out Pip's a age, year old. do that math. I think it's not like who you should date. I think it's like the youngest you can date. But that uh, still that math doesn't make sense. I don't like it. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, it's too like, young. Like that's a little bit creepy. Yeah. And I think that's like the, the main thing that we did hear from you in the DMs, which was interesting was, you know, you were saying that it depends on how old the youngest age is, right? Yeah. So Joe said the older the youngest person is, the less it matters. And yeah, like I said, this was something that a lot of you said, including Carla, she sent us a voice memo about it. Oh, are you okay? Do you want me to oh, do it? Oh, babe, if you could, if you could do <laughs> the honours. the appropriateness of an age gap depends on how old you both are. So if you're looking at a 10 year age gap, I would say if it's a 20 year old dating a 30 year old, that is maybe a little bit inappropriate. I think 
um, in terms of maturity, but also just life experience. Um, it can be quite different between a 20 and 30 year old. But if you were to compare that to say a 35 year old dating a 45 year old, I think that's, um, that's quite different. So yeah, I think it all comes down to what kind of age you both are rather than uh, the size of the age gap. Mm. Don't you feel like it is quite common for young people like in their early 20s to be dating like 30, 30 plus? Yes. Yeah, like like hearing from you and thinking about it, it's like that's so – that is quite ick. Yeah. And as we said before, it's that power imbalance. There's the gender sort of like play in there as well. It's such a big difference if you are 20 and you're just still developing your well, prefrontal cortex. Research shows that your prefrontal co- cortex doesn't develop until you're like 25, 27. Yeah, which is so, where Leo says, no more. <laughs> Cut it off. He wants you f- he, fucking... He wants- He wants to mould you. Remember that thing with Andrew Tate and he was, I think it was Andrew Tate, and he was like, I don't want to date older girls because I want to like mould them and make them like basically who I want them to be. Yeah. He did not. It's so fucked up. And at that age, like you probably remember, like I felt like I was so mature. Oh, my God, yeah. I remember when I was like 12, 13 in year eight in high school, like this guy who was in year 12, so he would have been like 17 or 18 even, was like saying that he like had a crush on me and that he wanted to be with me and like we might have even have hooked up and he was it was almost like kind of grooming energy but at the time I thought it was so mature and I was like, oh, my God, I've got this like older guy. Mm. But now in hindsight. Hindsight, I'm like, uh, that is so disgusting. It's funny that you say that because hindsight is a bitch and this is exactly what Whitney told us. So I have dated at least three different guys in the past that were at least 10 years my senior. The oldest one was 13 years my senior. And while when I was in those relationships, I vehemently insisted that age didn't matter now that I'm almost 30 and still not the age that they were when we started dating it's starting to feel different and not in a good way because I think there was definitely reasons that I was dating older men in my early 20s being that I worked in the arts and it's very difficult to sort of have your feet on the ground and feel like you're well established when your career path is less clear and having the approval of these older guys who were successful and driven and had their own apartments felt like it was validating to me and who I wanted to be as a person. But I also think that there was reasons that they were dating me too. And thinking about those reasons in retrospect makes me feel a little yucky. Like there was a reason that they were dating someone who was 24 when they were 36 and divorced. And it's not because other 36 year olds wanted to date them. I mean, going back to the original dm right that we got the divorce thing just thought of that well this is also such a common experience is like hetero couples like men will divorce in their 50s and then all of a sudden their new partner is like 25 years old yeah and it's that real stereotype but it it's true and you see it happen like it's a it's a bit of a like cliche but like it exists like i have friends that are dating divorced guys and you just think like sometimes I always think it's that Leonardo DiCaprio effect of like Mm. the wife is what's that research oh my god we talk about it all the time you're talking about the one where it's like um they see younger women as like more fertile not the research where like as women age they find they're the same age they're attracted to the same age but as men age right they are constantly attracted to women in their early 20s which is like yeah which is so evident. Yeah. Like when you see it out in society. You see it. I need to like, we need to fact check this. We'll get like, I'm pretty sure there's like a graph. <laughs> we'll put it here. We'll put it in the show notes. But this, I remember we talk about it all the time because it's like women will age and we'll just be like, yep, I'm attracted to a 30 year old. Yep. I'm attracted to a 40 year old when you're 40. Yeah. But men, it's always like early 20s. Well, as Whitney explained there, that was such a good example of the power dynamic being pretty messed up. But D, there were so many people that were like, age is just a number. Like it doesn't matter to them. Mikey messaged us saying age is about as important as weight and height. If there's a connection, it doesn't matter. Sam says depends on the person. Emotional maturity is more important than numerical age. So many people said this, um, including Michael, who gave us a really good example of how that's played out in his life. 
my previous partner and I had a five-year age gap. I was in my late 20s and she was in her early 30s. And I thought, you know, all the good things that come with a little bit of age and maturity, I sort of assumed that there'd be good communication, good emotional awareness, all those wonderful things. Um, but the opposite was true. It was a very angry and aggressive, poor communicating relationship. And I don't think either party felt very fulfilled in it. And then after that relationship ended, I um, got into a new one with a person that's five years younger than me. So I was in my late 20s and she was 22 at the time. And I thought of all like the issues that could come with that age gap of being, you know, a little bit less emotionally aware, sort of poor communication. But um, yeah, the opposite's been true. She's a fantastic communicator, the most emotionally aware person I've ever met. And um, yeah, we just sort of couldn't be happier. So age doesn't always, uh, always equal maturity, that's for sure. I do agree with that. I have a partner who is a couple of years younger than me, like, like a year and a half, and he is so mature. Mm. So, so mature. That's based off of his life experience. And I have, you know, dated pre people previously as well who were younger or around my age and they had to be like they had to act really mature at such a young age that it's almost like their maturity is like of a 40-year-old because they had to be like a 30-year-old at like 15. Yeah. So I think, yeah, like I think I agree with that. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. I think as well like a lot of people in the DMs were saying that they feel like age gaps aren't inherently bad and often there's this stereotype and it's kind of what we were talking about before but you know, in Whitney's case, it was absolutely true probably that there seems to be people who villainize the older person in the relationship and infantilize the younger person. And we got this really big DM from Nina that I want to read out and just like react to a little bit. So Nina messaged us and said, I'm 21 years old and have been casually seeing a guy who's 37 since September. We met out and clicked instantly. We see each other regularly. We stay at each other's houses, go on dates. I personally think there's nothing wrong with his character or see any major red flags but my friends beg to differ besides never meeting him my friends have expressed a lot of concern for me and are telling me to end it flat out accusing him of being a predator a creep an abuser even though there are no signs that he's anything of the sort I find it rude and I feel like we are both attracted and drawn to each other for multiple reasons which has nothing to do with our ages she says that this has been a really great debate within my friendship circle as I have friends who support me and have let me make my own decisions and choices then I have friends which every time is an intervention to stop me from seeing someone I enjoy and feel safe being around even though I see where my friends are coming from I still think judgment should remain a minimum as I've spoken about this with my therapist who remained neutral and supportive in summary I know what I'm doing I'm not seeking or wanting anything serious from this connection so I see nothing wrong with it personally Ooh. what do you think of that okay at first I was worried but then the fact that she said she's not seeking anything serious mm -hmm. well then I don't know also the therapist was like I'm yeah staying out of this. <laughs> it's hard because she's 21 and he's 37 it's a and huge age it's gap. a huge age gap and like we were saying like your prefrontal fr cortex doesn't develop to you like 25 26 mm. you might not understand the power dynamics at play yeah but she hasn't really described that there's anything she's concerned about or worried about and also when she says her friends haven't met the guy and they're already saying these accusations that he's a creep and he's a predator I think that is maybe a potential overstep of the friends because I think if you came into that relationship and you were like able to observe as a friend and you were like okay I'm seeing this that and the other and then you can make a bit more of an informed judgment I don't know. Yeah. I, it's like I want to know more about his behaviour. Like is there anything that's like red flaggy that she's concerned about? Is there anything like dynamic wise? Because I'm assuming if she's saying that it's just casual, like is he making you do things that you don't want to do sexually? Is he like, I don't know, like – you and know. it can be so subtle. That's yeah. and that's what I feel like if I was 21, if I was in her position, I feel like I wouldn't pick up on that stuff. Does she feel pressured to do certain things that yeah. she wouldn't do? You know? It's like, I, I, I get want the friend's concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the age is like so I probably yeah. would have been like that too yeah. as a friend. But I, I don't know. It's really hard to tell from this message. It sounds like though it's – a tough time for everyone involved, especially because we had so many DMs of people being like, I've fully lost friendships with people because yeah. they were dating someone older and they felt concerned or like, I don't know, like they felt like it was bad. Yeah. So. Well, at the end of the day, it's like, what is his intention? Yeah. Because like I was like only just developed at 21 and I know everyone's different, but I'm like. I was barely. I was barely, I was you know, barely a like, person. oh. 
I was doing stuff that was so But then we were saying that age is just a number. I don't know. It's like, it's it's messy. I know. It's really, really nuanced. And that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of with this. Um, we had a voice memo from Michaela as well. My first partner was 18 years older than me. And he also wasn't Aussie. So there was that generational gap. And there was also the like cultural gap. Whereas my partner now is 13 years older than me. But he's like born and raised in the same area. So we have a lot of similarities. And then when it comes to... So like the personality, like obviously I'm 24, he's 37. So I want to occasionally go out and, you know, be a 24 year old and party and see my friends. My previous partner was like manipulative and wouldn't let me do those things and didn't want me to be my age essentially. Whereas the partner I'm with now, like he's so supportive. If I want to go out, he'll do that. He'll come pick me up. He's happy for me to like do the things that he did. And we've been together almost three years now and it's great. So I think it really depends on who you are as a human. And obviously there's going to be that generational gap, but it's whether you're okay with doing things separately sometimes. Mm. I love that. Fuck, I just had more thoughts on this Nina thing when I was listening to that. I was just thinking like she doesn't say in the big message, but it's like what are you getting out of dating a 37-year-old? Because like well, you said for you like the older age gap was about like having someone more experienced, someone who can teach you things, like yeah. you learn from. And I guess if you're like 21 years old and maybe you want to explore your sexuality and you have this person who's like, you know what I mean? But like, he's like 16 years older than I know. Her. Like for me, the oldest I did was eight. And yeah. when I was really young, it was like six. So I was like – we were still in that same age, oh, yeah. not demo or bracket, but you know what I mean? So I'm just like, wait, hold on. Because what Michaela just said there where she's like, oh, my partner like picks me up and lets me lets me be, my she age. said, my age. Yeah. So I'm literally like, is this guy letting you be your age or is like, like what are you getting out of it? Because I'm like, you want to go out and have fun and, and like club. But she said it's casual, so it's cash. she might still be doing that. Nina Doll. I don't know. Give I, us a call. I'm still a bit like, I'm like, I'm concerned. I want to know more. I just want to know more. I need to know more. Yeah. But on the Michaela thing. Sorry, yes. I love that he is being supportive. Because yes. like she said, her previous partner was controlling. Yep. You cannot deny that there is going to be with a huge age gap, that generational difference. Like in your early 20s, I don't think there was a night where I didn't go out. Yeah. I, like I was constantly going out. Yeah. I was constantly drinking. I had such a different lifestyle to my namaste lifestyle now. <laughs> so, but then like, yeah, people in their like late thirties might be thinking about having kids, might be mm. wanting to like settle down, whatever that means. But you just have different priorities and you start thinking about your future more. You don't have the stamina. Mm. So I love that instead of being like, this isn't going to work and like controlling her, he's just being like, yeah, of course. Like I had that experience when I was in my 20s. Go. I'm gonna let I'll you pick do you it. up. I'll let you do it. Yep. They can still embrace the relationship for what it is and like allow the, the each other to be in their like spaces that they're in in that time of their lives. Exactly. Let's talk about the positives though, like speaking on that. There were so many people who loved an age gap and had like a lot of good things to say about it because I think it's pretty easy to shit on. Nicole was one of those people. I was 18 when I had a first serious sexual relationship with someone a bit older. He was 24, almost 25, and we saw each other made sort of a situationship for longer than a year. And I have continued to sleep with him on and off for four years now because... For some reason, it always draws me back. He's always known that he knows what he is doing and most other guys after that seem like they don't and for some reason that is a big turn on. That's so funny how he's like ruined sex for everyone else because he just came in hot and was like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And we had so many people, especially guys, talking about dating or sleeping with older women and just loving their sex life. Yeah, experience seemed to be a huge thing that you told us about. A lot of you were saying that you love sleeping with someone older mm. because they know what they're doing. They're so experienced. They're teaching you things. We did an episode on this. Yeah. On like how much sex or like, you know, the number that people have their um body count. Body count. What do we change it to? Sexual um, experience. Sexual journeys. Sexual journey. And we kind of concluded from that that like the amount of times you have sex doesn't really equate to like 
being good at sex. Yes. So I find that interesting yeah. that people are saying older people have more experience in sex, but like maybe that's just the years. They that's could have only true. had like a few sexual partners, but they're having a lot of sex over that period of time. So therefore they're more experienced. Yeah. Jasper DM'd us saying in terms of sex, I've slept with women 20 years older than me. The sex was amazing. They tend to love sleeping with younger guys and it's not their first vertigo and it's very fun. But also we had a lot of guys come through D talking about like the emotional benefits of dating somebody older than them. And that uh, was Dom. I'm currently dating someone who is four years older than me. It's the first time I've ever done that. Usually people I've dated are a year or two younger and it's been amazing. It's a new sense of calm that I never knew I needed. There's a lot more trust and it's relaxed and that's really nice. And I'm also currently away overseas and I've never gone two months without seeing a partner before but I knew I could with her because there's that trust and that level of calmness that I've never had with a partner before and it's amazing knowing I can do this trip and know that she's there waiting for me when I get back and it's very exciting and I can't wait to see her next week oh that's really cute how sweet we have to address the negative stereotype around an older woman dating a younger guy yeah you just get branded as like a cougar. Like Dana sent us this DM saying, I date men 20 years younger and I'm constantly called a cougar. What's the name for the opposite? Exactly. Mm, there is no yeah. name. There's no it's name. It's just like hot daddy. Love it. Like people are just like, yep, yeah, obsessed with an older guy. Yeah. But then people make fun of women who date younger and it's like how's the double standard there yeah yep completely um let's talk about a bit of the negatives as well like because that's definitely one of them getting judged from your friends which is what we heard about nina um and yeah that negative as well mia sent us a voice memo as well talking about the challenge of having different pop cultural references my partner and i are seven years apart and we met through work and i would say our biggest challenge is the like pop culture difference where he was born in the 90s and i was born in the 2000s but other than that we have no issues like you know everyone was very happy and welcoming to our relationship and we have been together for two years yeah and we're parents to a cat so <laughs> i think age gap relationships work if the two people in that relationship are open to differences and different boundaries. I definitely related to the pop culture thing. Yeah, do you? With my last relationship, there were just times where I was like, our taste in comedy and movies was so different. Like your humour is so chronically, chronically online, online <laughs> compared to mine. But it's like that would even be stronger with like yeah. someone born in the 2000s compared to someone in the 90s. For sure, for sure. And you would really notice that. Something that I spoke about before was like, being in different life stages and this was something that Heather sent us a voice memo about. I was 22, he was 36, so about 14 years age difference. We dated for two years. At the beginning it was fine but I slowly realised he wasn't open to communication or compromise. He was so stuck in his own ways. I wanted to travel, he had already done that. He was ready to buy a house but I wasn't. I was looking for a person that was mature and had experience but that wasn't the case at all. After we split up it made me think why did he want to be with someone so young? Mm. Gotta ask yourself I that love question. That. Um, something else that uh, Libby brought up as well in a voice memo, like, really made me think about the future consequences of dating someone, seriously dating someone older and staying with them like long term. My mother in law and father in law have a 20 year age gap, and she's quite sprightly in her 60s, whereas he is now in his 80s and he's quite sick. So I guess when they met 40 years ago, they definitely would have not considered this time of life where it is 24-hour care from her for him. It's hospital visits. It's looking at aged care homes. It's really hard for my partner who, you know, her whole life had people thinking her dad was her grandfather. And now, same thing, we're, we're only in our 30s, but we spend our time at aged care homes with her dad. Oh. That's so full on. And it kind of reminded me as well when I was dating someone older, the conversation. So we started dating and then it became like quite a long term relationship. And then the conversation about like kids and family and marriage and stuff would come up. And I was like, they were so much more ready for it than yeah. me. And it's like when you're younger, you don't think about that at all. But also we went like we weren't really to know that it was going to be such a long lasting relationship, yeah. but it did come up. And yeah, it just kind of reminded me of that. It is. Obviously, when you're both younger at the time, something that you wouldn't foresee, right? You and, didn't and think about that well, at all. You're no, just but like then I'm like, life. do you give up on like a great love? <sighs> 
Do you oh, give yeah. up on a great love because you know that later on down the track, if there's a 20 year age gap, you'll be losing this person most likely yeah. before you're ready to lose them. Like you're not aging together. One person's clearly like aging so much quicker mm. and that can be really devastating. Like I worry about Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah. Is he ready? Is he ready to be a caretaker? Because that age gap <laughs> is like 30 years. To be fair, they're like probably filthy rich and they won't have to worry about any of that. She'll just clone herself. Probably just do like the Walt Disney and get frozen yeah. <laughs> into like a cryogenic My thing. God. <laughs> but yeah, we did get this DM from James who said, the younger one in my experience outgrows the older and attraction for the older one fades. Wow. Firstly, <laughs> wow. Wow. Damn. Really proving my research. Um, And then he said, wouldn't recommend over seven years gap, which is kind of what we've come to yeah in this app that like you are all really staunch and like seven years being like the the main the main age gap like mm. don't let anything be more than that mm-hmm. the younger one ends up in a carer role and the romance is killed off i mean look that's very much thinking future yeah you know if you're listening to this and you're like 18 to i don't know 25. We haven't even spoken about like the age and consent and everything. That's a whole other thing. Because every state is so different. It's mm. like 16, 17 years old in different states. So yeah, I just think anything in teens is icky. That's kind of my conclusion. Yeah. Teens, early 20s can be pretty icky. But you know, we did do a chat. I believe you did a chat with Jerry Francis. Yes. Who okay. is like a regular, Um, he, he's like a science researcher about relationships and dating. Yeah. And we always go to him for like stats on things. And he yeah. had some pretty solid evidence about age gaps. Yeah. So I did an online article about this, about age gaps in general, um, a couple of years ago. And I, you know, went back and got it back up and was like, oh, yeah, I forgot I was a journalist in my past life. You still um, are, babe. Babe, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I just sit in front of a camera, though, and say silly things. <laughs> and then I forget. I'm like, oh, no, I did, I did research and I... <laughs> Wrote a whole article about this. Um, but, yeah, Associate Professor Jerry Karanzis, uh, who has been researching love relationships for, like, years and years and years, basically says that the research shows that the success of a relationship depends on the extent to which the partner shares similar values, beliefs, goals about their relationship, support each other in achieving those goals, foster relationship commitment, trust and intimacy and resolve problems in a constructive way. He basically says this has nothing to do with age. So the reality is while an age gap may bring about some challenges for couples, so long as couples work at their relationship, age is no barrier. So basically research shows that age doesn't matter. Mm. He did say that the main thing that breaks up couples with a large age gap is what we've kind of been talking through and, and hearing your experiences on is that like societal judgment. People like Nina's friends being like, what the fuck, your partner's a creep, he's a predator. Yeah. People judging you, people calling your partner a cougar, you feeling that pressure and people not being supportive of your relationship. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end it. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much to everyone who contributed to this episode. This is probably one of the biggest responses that we had to a call out in maybe like a couple of months mm. time. So it was really it's cool. Huge. Um. And yeah, we really appreciate all of you sending those voice memos and DMs in. You can find us on Instagram at Triple J The Hookup if you ever want to join in on the conversation. Yes. Um. And please comment, like, subscribe below. Um. Oh. You know all of this. Get involved. Um. And yeah, we love you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.